Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. Kimar Roach, and I listen to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Indeed you are, people. Indeed you are. My name is Mashal St. Patrick Hewitt, one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, and welcome back. It's been a while, what, three, four days since I dropped content. There was me saying at the start of 2023, yeah, we're going to have enough content. And then somewhere in the back of my head, I was like, yeah, we're going to drop something daily. But boy, money after me, you know, and i got to go work and, and all of that jazz. But we're still moving. We're still moving. I mean, we're still out here trying to create content and do our things and promise to be what we say we are, the best independent cricket media venture covering West Indies cricket, boys, girls, men, women, male, female, whatever you want to call it. We do it all and we do it at a level of analysis that you can't get anywhere else in the region. First things first, let's get the admin out of the way. You know the deal by now. If you're watching on YouTube, press that like button, share this, subscribe. More importantly, subscribe. We're still not at 4K. We're definitely under 50 to go, though. I, I looked today, and we're getting closer and closer. So do subscribe um, and help push us to 4K. It doesn't make any like meaningful difference, but it just helps to reach you know a whole number, 4,000 YouTube subscribers and followers. If you're listening to this on the podcast platform of your choice, do also leave a review if you can and share it with as many people as you like. All of this stuff helps the algorithms. All of this stuff helps the growth of the podcast. If you'd like to financially support the podcast for as little as two pounds, two dollars, two rupees, two euros, two yen, whatever your currency is, you can head to www.patreon.com forward slash carib cricket and you can become one of the, I think we've got 46 patrons at this moment in time. So you can become the 47th or the 48th, depending on how many of you decide to become patrons. Every little bit helps in terms of helping us grow the grow the channel, grow the, the, the multimedia venture and so on and so forth. But as ever, here I go again with my famous statement. Oh, this is going to be a quick one, but I actually think it will be. I just wanted to record a quick video looking at the likely selection for of the West Indies men's team, senior men's team, to tour Zimbabwe. First things first, I'm I'm aware that probably the squad that is selected to tour Zimbabwe is obviously going to be the squad that is selected to tour South Africa, injuries permitting, okay? Um, and uh, so whatever I say now, you can take that to probably mean that this will be the same squad that tours South Africa. And basically, I've been doing my kind of due diligence. I've been doing my research. I've been studying the stats. I've been looking at the context of West Indies cricket. Of course, Phil has now stepped aside. Uh, Andre Coley um, will be the new interim head coach. Johnny Grave recently came out, CEO of Cricket West Indies, and said it is likely that West Indies will appoint their permanent head coach at the end of April, or sorry, end of March, start of April, which would coincide with the end of um of the South Africa uh all format series that, that we're due to play after Zimbabwe. So Andre Coley has a chance here touring Zimbabwe and South Africa to stake a claim, put his name in the hat and maybe pull off some results that force Cricket West Indies to have to take his candidacy for the uh, position if he wants it seriously. But first things first we have to look at the squad. Now obviously 2022, we had a strong test year. We beat uh, England 1-0 at home in a three-match test series. We uh, beat Bangladesh 2-0 at home in a two-match test series. Comprehensively, we beat Bangladesh. And in the one test match that we beat England, that was comprehensive as well. And then we headed to Australia and lost, predictably so. We put up a good fight in the first test, took that test to five days, but lost by 160 odd runs. And then the second test, after four after four injuries to to key players in the team. So who was it again? Carl Mayers missed out in the second test due to injury. Kimar Roach, Jaden Seals, and Nkrumah Bonner. Was it Nkrumah Bonner? 
yeah, Nkrumah Bonner, sorry, had concussion. So we had four, um, we had four what we would consider to be starters out for the second test in Australia. We would have lost anyways, but I think that contributed greatly to the the kind of embarrassing nature of the defeat in the second test, as the captain Craig Brathwaite put it. There was there was a lack of fight in that second test. But that notwithstanding, I'm gonna first things where I'm gonna start first is just to remind people who went on tour to Australia. This was the test squad that went to Australia. And if you need a pen and a paper to kind of follow along, because I'm going to give you my analysis and give you my reasoning and rationale for the squad that I think should go to Zimbabwe. But because I'm not, some of you will be listening to this on audio. Some of you will be watching this, obviously, on YouTube. It always helps to write things down so that you can, if you're going to challenge what I'm saying, you've got like a detailed critique to come back with. So the squad that went to Australia, Craig Brathwaite, captain, Jermaine Blackwood, vice captain, uh, Nkrumah Bonner, Shamar Brooks, Tejan uh, Ryan, Shanda Paul, Roston Chase, Josh De Silva, Jason Holder, Alzari Joseph, Carl Mayers, Anderson Phillip, Raymond Reefer, Kimar Roach, Jaden Seals, Devon Thomas. So that's 15 names that went to Australia. Let me just double check that. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Yeah, 15 names that went to Australia. First things first, you have to expect that we're taking a 15-man squad to Zimbabwe and then on to South Africa. Before we get into the who should or shouldn't be in the team, the first thing you have to establish is who's likely to not go out of that 15. We already know that Jaden Seals will not be going. Jaden Seals is injured for the next four months, so we know that we already have one place that has to be filled, and that is the place of Jaden Seals. So that takes us down to 14. Then I had a look at the rest of the squad and I said to myself, who else's position in that squad can we feasibly say is under pressure? And when I went through it, I mean, I walk and talk it with you. Craig Brathwaite, no, like he's fine. Jermaine Blackwood, he's fine. Bonner, fine. And anyone who's watching is going, no, Mash, how can you say? They're fine. Stop being silly. Like, realistically, all of these players are fine. As in, they're going nowhere. Tejan Rashandapal, locked in. Believe it or not, people, Rost and Chase locked in, but I'll explain why later. Josh De Silva locked in. Jason Holder locked in. Alzari Joseph locked in. Carl Mayer's locked in. Anderson Phillip is locked in. Kimar Roach, assuming he's back from injury in Australia, is locked in. And Devon Thomas, I think, is locked in as well. Now, some of those names, people will say, huh? Mash, are you really saying Devon Thomas is locked in? Yes, two reasons why. One, He's the next batter off the rank um, in terms of should someone's place become available, Devon Thomas is next. That's why he got the pick in the second test in Australia. Obviously, he took two wickets, probably the best bowler in that second test. And I think he got a 19, 19 runs in one end. Was it 19 and like 12? I can't remember what he actually made with the bat in the second test. No one made any runs of any note, really. So I think Devon Thomas is locked in and you have to remember that Devon Thomas is also locked in because he'll be the backup wicketkeeper should Josh De Silva get an injury. So I think Devon is locked in. I don't think that's open for any debate. When I went through the team, after I took Jaden Seals away, which left me with 14 players, there was only two other players that I thought there was an argument to say they won't travel. One is Shamar Brooks and the other one is Raymond Reefer. Now let me explain. Shamar Brooks... I think is going because he's not involved in the Barbados uh, four day matches. He's not in any T20 competition. Um, so I believe that Shamar Brooks will be going to Zimbabwe. So first things first, I'm telling you, I think he's going. I don't think he should go. I don't think he should have made the team for the Australia series. I don't think he'd done anything to justify a recall to the test squad, much less start. Um, when uh, within within the Australia series itself, he got four innings in Australia. Apart from the first innings in the first test, when he came in as a concussion replacement for Increment Bonner, I think he made thirty five or something. He looked like he shouldn't be in the test side. And now I think I think Brooks's test match average now must be something like twenty three. If we were being, if we were applying level headed proper critique and analysis, Brooks shouldn't be there. I don't know what Desmond Haynes and Roland Butcher are going to do, but if if this is why I'm not the guy to say, uh, we must always just sack selectors, sack selectors. And some of you will be like, oh, Mash, I saw your recent episode on West Indies on 99.94 and you said sack 
Butcher and um, Haynes. Yeah, that was all tongue in cheek. So I was talking about how I believe that Santoki and I are better selectors than the actual selectors we pick. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think, I think that if West Indies picked me tomorrow as a West Indies selector, I'm probably top five selectors in the whole of the Caribbean. Do you know why? Because basically I got sense. That's that's the only I got sense. That's it. I got sense. I look at situations and go, this don't make no sense, whereas this does make sense. I'm always like, whoever you select, can you justify it with chest in a media press conference? And when I come on these channels and I tell you about who I would pick and why I wouldn't, I can come with a clear justification for why. You might not agree with it, but I can always come with a clear justification. My problem with some West, some selections of West Indian teams, and let's just focus on the men's senior team, is sometimes people are picked. So on the last tour, Shamar Brooks was picked and Roston Chase was picked and there was no justification for their selection. And that's my issue. Based on how Brooks played in uh, Australia and based on the fact that he'd done nothing to earn a recall and based on the fact that the last time he was in the team, which was the England series, he'd done nothing to keep his place, he shouldn't be going to Zimbabwe, but I think he will go. So then I moved to Raymond Reefer. Arguably, some people say to me, but Raymond Reefer got injured in Australia. He hasn't yet had a chance to really stake a proper claim in the West Indies side. Obviously, Reefer batted at number three in the Test Series versus Bangladesh. It didn't work out very well. And I'm willing to accept that people say, Mash, Reefer's not been given a proper run, so we can't be dropping him yet. Here's the chaser now. Why am I saying that Raymond Reefer might get dropped? Or no, Brooks is going. Why am I saying that Raymond Reefer might get dropped? Here's why. Because West Indies have to take a spinner. And when a, and before anyone calls Roston Chase's name, he doesn't count. West Indies have to. Desmond Haynes and Roland Butcher, if you haven't already selected the squad for Zimbabwe, listen carefully to what I'm saying. We have to take a frontline spinner to Zimbabwe and South Africa, but we have to take one. So if we're taking a frontline spinner, the next question you have to ask yourself is, who are you dropping for that frontline spinner? My argument is you have to drop whoever you consider to be the weakest batter in the side. Hear me out. The reason why you drop the weak, whoever you consider to be the weakest batter in the side is because Roston Chase is going to keep his place. Not because of anything he did with the ball, which is why he got selected to go to Australia. It's because Roston Chase did enough with the bat. He averaged 30 in Australia. I think he got 150. Roston did enough with the bat to probably mean that if West Indies want to, they can probably try and move Roston back up the order. Remember that in Australia, Roston batted at number eight. In order to get a proper spinner back into the squad, you the, the, the solution is simple. You move Roston back into the top six. And then that frees up a space at number eight or number nine for a frontline spinner to play. So when you look at your configuration of your 15-man squad, you have to drop one of your batters who you don't expect to play in the top six. And when I look at the squad, that can only be Shamar Brooks or Raymond Reefer. It's not Devon Thomas because Devon Thomas is your backup wicketkeeper. So people, I put it to you. You've heard my logic. I think you have to drop one of Brooks or Reefer and call in a specialist spinner. Do you agree? So that's the first thing I'm asking people, do you agree? If you're listening on Spotify, Apple, whatever it may be, whichever pod platform of your choice, at me, at Carib Cricket. Send me an app uh, on our on our media channels and I'll get back to you. If you're watching this on YouTube, get in the comments below. Who would you select? Or would you would you even drop Brooks or Reefer? And if you're one of those people who's listening to this going, this man is chatting far as usual. If you're not dropping Brooks or Reefer, how are you getting a frontline spinner into the squad? And don't tell me drop Chase because Chase ain't going nowhere. How are you getting a frontline spinner into the squad? And don't say to me the frontline spinner can replace Jaden Seals because then that means that you're leaving your bowling attack as Roach, Alzari, Jason, which you might say, Mash, that's more than enough. But I think they will replace Jaden Seals with another seamer. Why? Because what happens if one of the seamers breaks down? 
You're going to fly a man from Jamaica or fly a man from Trinidad or fly a man from wherever. What are you going to do if one of your seamers breaks down? So you should all, we saw what happened in Australia. Roach broke down, seals broke down. And then what happened? We had to fly Marquino Minley, quick time from Jamaica with two days warning. He bowled about three balls, then he broke down. So don't tell me replace Jaden Seals with a frontline spinner. We're going to need to bring a pacer in case people break down. So let me go to the next uh, issue. Who's the pacer that we're going to take to replace Jaden Seals? I think it can only be one of two names, possibly three. If we're including Marquino Minley, who I haven't seen him featuring in the Jamaica warm-up games, actually. I suspect that the, was it a hamstring tear? tear? I think Marquino got in Australia. If it was a hamstring tear, Marquino's not going to be fit enough to go to Zimbabwe. He's not going to have recovered. He may well have got, like, yeah, he just won't have recovered in time. So that leaves two names for me. I think only one of the following two people can go to Zimbabwe um, slash South Africa. It's either Jeremiah Louis. Now, Jeremiah Louis has been consistent um, for the Leeward Islands over a period of time now. The reason why you have to consider Jeremiah Louis is because when we last played 18 cricket against Bangladesh A in the summer, the two main pace bowlers were Marquino Minley and Jeremiah Louis, and Sherman Lewis, some might say, as well. So we took Minley in Australia as the replacement because when you look at the West Indies A versus Bangladesh A game, Minley took six wickets across that unofficial test series against Bangladesh A. He took six wickets at 22. But when you go back and look at our four-day championship, Jeremiah Louis. Technically, Kimo Paul was the best seamer, but I don't think they're going to go to Paul just yet. Jeremiah Louis was the best seamer in the competition. 18 wickets at 20. Kimo Paul took 20 wickets at 23. But Jeremiah Louis has been consistently performing over a number of seasons now. So I think that if you're taking a seamer to replace Seals, I think you've probably got to go with Jeremiah Louis. And I'm assuming that Marquino Minley isn't fit. The wild card choice, and I don't know why I'm calling it wild wild card, given his experience, is actually you don't go to the next taxi on the rank. You go back to experience and you say, Shannon Gabriel, you just proved your fitness for us in the uh, Super 50 competition. You've been bowling in the United States as well. Granted, it's only four overs, T20 and all of that. We're going to Zimbabwe. More, imp more importantly, we're going to South Africa where there's going to be serious spice in the wicket. So we're going to need some seriously quick bowlers. Yes, we've got Alzari. And I think there is a great chance. Well, who knows what Haynes and Butcher are going to do. But let me rephrase it. They would be silly if they don't consider going back to Shannon Gabriel. The only reason to not go back to Shannon is if they're thinking, boy, we've got to think of the future. Shannon's 34 years old. It's time to transition in some new bowlers and so on and so forth. That's the only reason you wouldn't consider Shannon Gabriel. But if it's about actually trying to be competitive, I think you have to replace Jaden Seals with Shannon Gabriel. And then your SEMA options in, in Zimbabwe and South Africa would be Kimar Roach, assuming he's fit, Alzari Joseph, Anderson Phillip, Shannon Gabriel. And then obviously, depending on what you do with Jason Holder, obviously Jason Holder is there as a medium pacer. Obviously, Carl Mayers is there as a medium pacer as well. Thinking of that, that's six bowlers, four frontline bowlers. And then is Holder frontline these days? <sighs> okay, let's count Holder's frontline. Five frontline bowlers and Carl Mayers, that, or five seamers and Carl Mayers. Now, they all can't play. So I'm willing to accept that some of you might say, Mash, forget Shannon, forget Jeremiah Louis, call a frontline spinner instead of, um, in, instead of uh, in, as a replacement, sorry, for Jaden Seals. I just don't know, because if, if <sighs> I just think that's too much of a risk. I think you've got to bring another pacer to, to replace Seals with, with South Africa in mind. But that said, obviously we do have to find a way to fit the, the spin bowler in. So again, I'll put it out to you, the audience. How are you fitting your spin bowler in? I'm giving you two options. Option one, you drop one of Brooks and Reefer, Brooks or Reefer for a frontline spinner. Or option two, you replace Jaden Seals because of his injury with a frontline spinner. 
tell me in the comments below at me at Carry Cricket what you would do. And then, of course, that then brings us to issue number three. Who's the frontline spinner? If we're going on raw performance, consistent performance and numbers, the spinner you take to both Zimbabwe and South Africa would be Rakeem Cornwall. That the argument done. If we're going based on ability, numbers, consistency, it has to be Rakeem Cornwall. This before this before we even consider the fact that Rakeem Cornwall can bat really well. That's who I would go for. The reason I think they won't, beyond the fact that they'll use the medical thing and the weight thing and the this and the that, the visceral fat, all of this, right? The reason I think they won't do it is because they're going to again fall into the trap of saying we're already carrying an off spinner and it's rust and chase. I, I almost guarantee they're going to fall into that trap, which means that if they take another spinner, they'll go for the left armor, or sorry, they'll go for, they should go for the left armor good to Keshe Moti. That's what I would do. Obviously, I'd rather them just call Rakeem Cornwall and be done with it. But because Roston's definitely going to keep his place, and because Roston's, Roston's an off-spin bowler, I just don't believe that they'll take two off-spinners to, to Zimbabwe and South Africa. They'll look at it and go, why should we take two off-spinners? We've already got one. Because that's how we select. That's how, we, that's how our thinking goes when it comes to West Indies cricket. So I suspect our spinner, the frontline spinner we take, will come down to either Rakeem Cornwall or Goodakesh Multi. So with that said and done, if it was up to me, this is my 15-man squad to tour, uh, to tour Zimbabwe slash South Africa. Craig Brathwaite. Sorry, let me just look at my team again, people, because it's a bit mad. Let me just double-check this is what I think we should... Yeah, Craig Brathwaite, Jermaine Blackwood, Nkrumah Bonner, Shamar Brooks, he shouldn't be in the team, but I'm adamant they're going to select him. So I've just, I'm just keeping him there. Tay Shandapur, Roston Chase, Josh De Silva, Jason Holder, Alzari Joseph, Carl Mayers, Anderson Phillip, Gudakesh Moti, Kimar Roach, Shannon Gabriel, Devon Thomas. That is the squad I think. No, that's a, that's a combination of the squad I think they will select and what I think they should do. It's not a full squad of what I think they should do, because if it was up to me, Shamar Brooks wouldn't be in that squad and I'd replace him with Brandon King. So actually, let me just tell you what, if it was purely up to me. So Desmond Haynes and Roland Butcher, if you're still listening to the video at this stage, this is the squad that the Caribbean Cricket Podcast or certainly my half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast would select to tour Zimbabwe slash South Africa. This is now my squad. Craig Brathwaite, Jermaine Blackwood, Nkrumah Bonner, Brandon King, Tej Narayan Shandapur, Roston Chase, Josh De Silva, Jason Holder, Alzari Joseph, Carl Mayers, Anderson Phillip, Rakeem Cornwall, Kimar Roach, Shannon Gabriel, Devon Thomas. That is the squad that I would pick. The joke is the first squad I gave you, I don't think that'll be the squad because whenever whatever whenever I think what West Indies should logically do, it won't happen. The second squad I give you gave you, which is what I want them to do, also won't happen because it's what I want them to do. But let me know, people. I've given you a bit of context. I've gone through bits and pieces of this and that. Um, you have to understand, people, that what I've given you is a combination of what I think they will do along with what I want them to do. And as much as some of you are going to get in the comments now and say, what about Alik Athanase and what about um, Akil Hussain and what about, if you're going to call some bats on the West Indies Championship, what about Akiran Powell? I don't think anyone's actually saying that. Or what about Akimo Paul? I'm hearing all that. But what you have to understand is with this video is I've I've had to consider what I think the selectors will do on top of what I want them to do. So I'm trying to be balanced and I'm trying to be rational based on where I think they will go with selection. As ever, people, if you've, if you've got this far, like, share, subscribe to the video. If you haven't yet liked the video or subscribe to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast before this um, uh, video or podcast episode ends, 
do it now. And if you haven't shared it to any of your cricket friends who you th- who you think would want to listen to this type of content, uh, copy the link now and get ready to post it as soon as I'm gone. I'll be Mashal St. Patrick here at one half the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Thank you and good night. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. 